Hello and welcome to our second speaker series in the lead up to the UTMB. My name is Charlie Radcliffe and I'm the community manager here at Never Stop Chamonix. Today I'm joined with one of our global athletes who has raced and run all over the world with FKTs on some of the f highest mountains and run some of the longest distances. Today I'd like to welcome Brazilian ultra runner Fernanda Maciel. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Charlie. So starting at the beginning, uh, you are a competitive trail runner and you have raced here in Chamonix at the UTMB many times. What is so special about here? What brings you back? And, and I guess, why did you choose to make this place your home as well? Well, uh, I came here first time in 2009 for a six weeks uh, trip. And uh, then I was able to climb the Ekron, climb Mont Blanc. Uh, I raced the TDS. I won the race. So I had so much beautiful moments uh, living here in Chamonix that, uh, that just brought me all the best feelings. Uh, so this is why each year I was coming back to experience the same, to, to be able to explore this area that is, is amazing. Uh, yes, and two years ago, I just decided to live here because it's, um, well, it's uh, a lovely place and uh, the Mont Blanc is super special for me. Yeah, and uh, I raced so many times, I think uh, nine, ten times, which I say the Mont Blanc. So having bad experience, good experience for sure, because that is the way, you know, that uh, we try uh, to be a champion. Mm -hmm. And thanks so much, uh, Charlie. He was my sport crew during many races. And as I'm far away from my family and my best friends, they are in Spain. So, Charlie, you are super important for me. <laughs> <laughs> the... And you're saying about you know, finding this place as a community and, and as a place you wanted to, to live and to talk about that, because obviously Chamonix has all year round, there's different sports, and how have you settled into uh, the year-long life in Chamonix? Well, I'm a summer person, so in Chamonix, uh, the winter here is long, so I try to escape for one, two months to Brazil just to have uh, the opportunity to be with my family. Uh, but here during the year, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's nice. Uh, uh, you have like the summer season, so you run a lot. Then uh, November, it starts to rain, and then I think it's a good moment just to leave Chamonix to, to, to do a travel. And then the winter is beautiful. You can ski a lot, uh, ice climbing, and uh, you can keep it running. Well, I love, I have to run long distance. And uh, sometimes yesterday I was talking with my friend. Wow, do you remember that run you did four hours in the snowstorm? <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's cool also you know, to experience this challenge. So Chamonix brings so much challenge for, for me as an athlete. And I think that is the way that I, I want, because I want to improve all my skills. Mm -hmm. and uh, as a runner and getting more skills uh, just to, to move fast on the mountains and he's perfect also to run higher. Mm, absolutely. And you, you've raced all over the world. Um, probably the furthest away is, is the ultra trail to Mount Fuji, but, but how, does, how does it compare in, in the Americas, in, in Asia, in, in Africa with Marathon de Saab and then, and then Europe? What's it like racing yeah, in these places? Yeah, uh, it's completely different. This is the way I like it, no? Like, uh, I did the Utete World Tour because it's long distance and also it's one race in Utete Mont Fuji. I've been there four times. It's beautiful, completely different. You need to clean your shoes before you start to climb, run up. They, are, they have so much conscience about the environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, you cannot uh, use the trekking pool, for example. It's different. And then you go for Marathon de Salves in Africa, no? It's, uh, it's uh, 50 degrees, uh, like self-sufficient, it's 250K. It's another experience, mm. super tough, flat <laughs> heat, and I like it. And then I've been running in the Amazon forest in Brazil. Mm. It's another crazy experience in Everest, around Everest. And then U.S., it's, um, well, Patagonia. It's so different, each country, each continent, uh, that make, uh, this is the why I love this sport, you know? It's, um, you experience uh, the challenge of the mountains or the desert, and that uh, brings you so much, um, well, just uh, you became a better athlete and a better person, I think, uh, seeing different cultures, different, uh, uh, playgrounds to play and different uh, people, no? 
I, the Japanese uh, runners, they are super funny and well, that motivates you also the styles they have and how they love the mountains. Uh, for example, it's Mount Fuji Sun. Mm -hmm. It's Sun means uh, God. Mm -hmm. So each mountain for Zen, for Zen is a God. Mm -hmm. uh, so that also makes special. They respect so much mm -hmm. the mountain. Yeah, so I think it's uh, interesting to learn when you are running in faraway places. And but after establishing yourself as a as a, as a as a one of the world's strongest runners, you then looked at applying what you'd learnt and the strength you'd built into uh, different projects. And your first major one was the running the Camino de Santiago. So tell us a little bit about that. What 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 is it? And and what was the project? Well, um, I was a lawyer in my past, an environmental lawyer, so I work in an a environmental ONG. And um, once I did a project, and also in parallel I was ultra runner already, uh, but uh, in this ONG once I did a project, like a work with the politics from Palestine and Israel, uh, was a project about the conflict resolution, and at the end of this project that I was leading then, I told them like, oh, I promised myself that I'd like to do like a project for the social environment, like kind of social environment project for the society, for to bring peace. And then I decided to do the Camino de Santiago de Compostela. So that was uh, nine years ago. So I created the white flow. This mm -hmm. the white flow is just to bring peace. Uh, because the running, sometimes for me, it's, uh, it's uh, an individual sport, no? And I'd like to get involved with my followers, like my friends. Uh, and uh, because I learned so much with the ONG and also with my parents in Brazil that you are always helping people, helping the environment, always. And then I was missing that living here in Europe. Mm -hmm. So I created this project that, wow, I can run. So I can have a very hard challenge running and I can have a challenge, uh, a social environment challenge also. And then this is the way I, I created the white flow and running 900 kilometers was fucking tough mm. for me. I was very scary because it was one ultra per day. It was 90K. Some days I was not like running 95K and the next day 93, then 89 <laughs> as a pilgrim. So I was scared of everything sleep in a hut. So that was the first project and I was helping the children with, with cancer. Okay. My massagist, he has a kid and uh, the kid uh, was one year old and already with cancer. So that was, I want to help so much. So I was helping him and all uh, the other kids in Brazil and also in Spain. So that started the white flow and uh, I've, I think I've done seven already. Yeah. Uh, and it's super cool that um, I may have so much gratitude for white flow. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning, as you said, it was your first one. And as that evolved, you got more into this, the fastest known times, FKTs. And uh, one of the big steps for you with that was Kilimanjaro. Um, so tell us more about Kili and your FKT on, on this mountain in Africa. Yeah, like uh, I was always wish to go to Africa because it's kind of my country. You have, I love black people and uh, it's uh, they need the help, you know. So I decided to go there. My friend, in, in, she's in um, Andorra, and uh, she told me that they have uh, an orphanage there that they need help. And I said, well, maybe I can go to Africa. Okay, so I can climb uh, Kilimanjaro like running. So let's try that. So I training and uh, yes, yeah, so I went to Kilimanjaro to do to run up and down. So, yes, yeah, so I have the record there of the speed record. And also I spend many days with these kids. Uh, oh, they don't have nothing in mm. nothing. And just to be there, like, hug is in, give is in, like, love, run is in, was, oh, was incredible. And I help them also to, to have some uh, financial support, to, to have food. So it was an amazing experience, and that is what is the white flow brought, no? And also the all the people, all my followers that they helped also was amazing. It was beautiful experience. Hmm. You seem to thrive on this sort of challenge, and uh, took the next step, which was quite a big step, up to Aconcagua, the highest mountain in the Americas, in South America. Uh, how did this compare to Kilimanjaro? 
Well, I did Aconcagua before Kilimanjaro. Oh God, sorry. <laughs> so no problem. So Kilimanjaro became easier mm. after experiencing Aconcagua. So as you know, I'm Brazilian, so Aconcagua is the highest mountain in America, my continent, and then this is the way I was since I was teenagers because all my friends they are trying to climb Aconcagua and they come back to Brazil without doing the, the peak. And I was like, wow, this mountain is so tough. So I decided to do because after 10 years of the experience running mountains, I thought, oh, maybe now I, I'm preparing to just to see this mon mountain. No? And I came there and I failed. I didn't have any experience in 7,000 meters high altitude. So for, for sure, like the altitude, I just got altitude sickness because it's super high, especially when it's different when you go walk. Mm -hmm. You acclimatize this step by step, but running suddenly is a big shock for your body. Eh? And uh, especially because it's it's long way. So I start in 2000, going to 7000 and also the kilometer. So it's a deep valley that I need to cross 10 rivers during the night with uh, glaciers. So I cannot touch the water, otherwise I froze my feet. It's so much tricky, so much rock avalanche, uh, mud avalanche. Uh, it's it's uh, many many things that uh, challenge yourself to be on the top. Um, yeah, so I had a crazy experience there, but finally I could do that. So I was the first woman able to run up and down. I'm super proud of that because it was um, a beautiful experience for me. I had to learn so much about mon mountains, about God, about to have a first and uh, about uh, to be sad to not conquer a mountain, to be to want to come back there. I learned a lot, and I've seen like many runners that try. Eh? Mm -hmm. With Albert Hernando, he tried, he couldn't. Emily Fosberg, like many runners, mm -hmm. Nuria Dominguez. So each, like you see that the runners, they come, they try, and they come back home without like doing the summit uh, in a fast way because it's a long way. Mm -hmm. And these two, Kilimanjaro and Aconcagua, are still, they're getting more technical, but we're still running mostly. More recently, you've, you've started to blur the lines a little bit about the environment. And so it was last year, wasn't it, where we had, uh, where you did the uh, Grand Paradiso um, and, and the Matterhorn combination. So again, how was that different? Um, how was that a big step in terms of moving into even more technical terrain? Yeah, that was more a personal um, project for me uh, because I've been trying to climb the Matehorn many times. So first time I got, um, I was trained alone. And also, I try always to go to train alone. <laughs> that is, uh, uh, so I got frozen ice the first time. So I spent uh, three days in in Visp in Switzerland in the hospital with frozen ice. I thought I was being blind for all my life. It was the craziest moment. Eh? Now I have brain injury, I get super scary to be paralyzed, but to, to be blind is crazy. So that I got so much respect for this mo mountain. Uh, and then I lost uh, my friend uh, Gonzalo there ju just one week before I was going to climb uh, Mate Horn. And that uh, was so tough for me. I had the dinner with Gonzalo, I, I was leaving home. Uh, so Gonzalo is my flatmate in Chamonix. So I was going to Austria to compete. He was going to Matehorn to climb with his client. Okay, see you tomorrow or see you in three days. And then uh, when I just arrived in, in Austria and they said, oh, he just, he got a rock fall, got him. And I know that Matehorn is a dangerous mountain because so much rock falls there. Uh, so I got so much respect for this mountain that uh, was kind of trauma because in the same time that I lost, uh, like Gonzalo left us, I also, I lost more four friends on the mountain that I was climbing with them before. And I was like, wow. So it was a tough year for me. And then I started to do like also therapy just because after that I was, I started to be scary on the mountains. And then this is the way I brought this project. So like Grand Paradiso, because uh, I want to challenge myself to see if I was able to do that alone. Uh, it's an easy mountain for Alpinists, not for a Brazilian. <laughs> I didn't um, born in Chamonix, so I have so much respect. That was so tough for me. 
is there is ice cloud, there is a, a glacier, there is rocky. So for me, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, to do that by myself without any rope, so in a fast way. So for me, it was a challenge, and I love it. And also after uh, trying to combine, combine that, uh, it was uh, good to go to Matterhorn. In Matterhorn, for, unfortunately, I didn't have any mountain guide. I had just a crazy friend with me, so it was a crazy experience. Plus all my trauma that I was facing. He was fighting with some mountain guys in the middle of the, 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 the wall, in the middle of the, the climb. And then he started to call his grandmother in the middle of the mountain. And then he started to help everybody in the middle of the mountain. <laughs> when I was in the ridge, like in some ridge, like super scary, like it was crazy experience. <laughs> I couldn't like breathe during all the way because everything was just crazy for me. And for when I arrived in the top, man, it's just I was walking to the cross. One guy is out of rope. He started to just to follow me. I was like, I would see like someone die in front of me. And he he stopped it. Fuck. So all the way it was just crazy experience. And all the rock falls. Uh, the next day, I, t I told my mom, Mom, I, uh, I arrived in the summit, and I couldn't imagine how deep that was for me. And uh, yeah, it was a crazy experience. And the next day, my mom just showed me a TV program in Brazil that they, they, they showed that many the helicopters was uh, rescuing everybody in the mountain because of so much rock falls there. Mm -hmm. So that is Matejon. It's just so much rock falls, and for me, it was this crazy experience. For sure, it's easy, you go there, well, but for me, it was this emotional experience with this mountain, mm -hmm. and I don't want to come back there anymore. <laughs> I want to do other mountains, but mm -hmm. that was uh, a crazy experience, and yeah, this is the why I did this project. It was just a personal challenge. Mm -hmm. And, and again, you sort of stepped a little bit further though into the climbing um, when you had a project which you teamed up with uh, your, your, the North Face teammates uh, with uh, Naranjos del Bunes. Um, I mean, that's one of the great things is, is sharing these adventures with friends, with other people. So tell us a bit more about that project, because that was, again, that was running, but more real climbing on this one, wasn't it? With, with uh, Eneko or Ike, who was with you? Eneko. Eneko, yes. So Eneko is a good friend, he's my teammate, he's super funny, super motivated, and always he was like, Fernanda, I want to do a project for you, let's go to Naranjo. And uh, Naranjo is in Picos Europa. So I live in Spain for 10 years and Picos Europa is super technical. Mm -hmm was my dream to come there because it's so tech more than Andorra and whatever. And then I said, wow, that will be a crazy challenge if I can come from the sea to cross all, to do all this traverse from the Cantabria Sea to arrive in Naranjo and then to climb. So yes, it was almost 100K and I said, fuck, I need to go during the night. It was super warm there. And so the running was the challenge in this case. Uh, so I did a great time there, uh, super tough, the running, it's very it's, it's steep, cluars and uh, kind of dangerous. And the climb was kind of easy after doing all this uh, running challenge. Uh, the, because I've been doing some uh, running climb projects before where the climb was tougher mm -hmm. than the run. The climb, like my running in the Dudge Deus, for example, in Janeiro, the run took four hours and the climb, eight hours climbing. This time it was the opposite, you know, like 13 hours running, one hour climbing. Okay. Well, and Echo is so fast. <laughs> we climbed together, like who is that, um, like, um, how do you, uh, how do you say? Simon climbing. It's simon climbing. And so he's so fast, so, and so motivated mm -hmm. that I had to climb fast, you know? And uh, yeah, it was an uh, easy route for climbers, tough for me, especially after 13 hours running, it's not easy. I was scared to block my legs there, to have some cramps. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it was just beautiful. The, the Naranjo is a beautiful mm -hmm. wall, uh, limestone, poor. And uh, when I arrived to the top, you just had that uh, big hug and also our silence, just to feel that uh, our mountains and uh, the rock there is powerful. It's a powerful place. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there you've had this beautiful moment where you've taken it in at the top. 
almost the opposite with the Matterhorn, where you're kind of glad to get off the mountain. Uh, if you could go back, though, to one single moment, one race or one country experience, what, where would that be? Um, oh, it's a, diff a difficult question. I think I could come back to Camino Santiago. Mm. Uh, yeah, because it's this spiritual um, challenge also, no? Mm. You learn so much because this Camino is a, is a pilgrim. Uh, it's so much spirituality on this way. And then touch you in so many ways. Mm. I think uh, I'd like to come back there. It's I've been. I think next year you'll be ten years. I've done so. Maybe now, if ten yeah, years older, <laughs> uh, can be a new experience. Mm. Yeah. So mm. it's I. Yeah, I think I want to come back there. Mm. And I mean, there's so many people out there who. Um, who are inspired by you and what you do, and one as a runner, but as uh, again on the the fastest known times and the adventure side of things, what advice would you give to someone who wants to explore the mountains in a similar way to you? Well, training hard. You need to train every day. Like if you like to to be better, no. I think uh, uh, challenge yourself every day. Train smart, you know, and just be open. There is a connection no, with nature, and uh, it's not about ego in the competition. What you are looking for is um, how to have this deep connection, how that uh, you can come back home and share mm -hmm. that no, with the people that uh, you, you love, and also about the environment. No? Um, you love nature, and I think if you can add running into nature, mm -hmm. it's just a perfect match a perfect combo and that uh, make us like a better person a better runner so yeah i think uh, yeah it's keeping pushing hard hard uh, work hard and uh, choose the best um, mountains and dreams that you want amazing well thank you very much for joining us it's been a pleasure to hang out and talk as always and we will be back next week with another speaker series, as well as during the UTMB, we will have uh, a number of uh, shoe tests and opportunities to run with our athletes and test out the new Vective range. Uh, do check out the full program on thenorthface.com and we will see you soon. <laughs>